Hey everybody, Spencer here in another photo adventure. Um, back in Florida after our little trip to Georgia at Old Car City. And I've had my eye on this particular place for a little while. It's an abandoned gas station and there's a residence right next door. Um, I was actually stopped by the police last time I was here and they were really cool. They, you know, realized I wasn't here to vandalize or do anything harmful to the structure. I think it's quite amazing. And what they told me was that this was built back in 1960, around that time. Uh, it was one of the few gas stations I had in this area. And I'm actually working right off what used to be the main road. And now what they have done is when they built the new highway, obviously this kind of became non-existent. So anyway, um, yeah, so wanted to get a shot of this. It's the light can kind of kind of harsh right now. It's probably around 10 o'clock if I had to guess. So we're dealing with lots of highlight and shadow problems. But what I'm thinking about shooting is this back in here, which is kind of in the shade and it has this really neat uh, vines growing up and we've got all this paint that's weathered and coming off. I just think that's really, really amazing. So first, why don't we take a look around and see what we can find here. Uh, let's give you a little tour and see what you guys think. All right, so here we go. Try not to be too shaky. But uh, yeah, let's take a look around inside and see if we can find anything. Even the old bulbs are pretty cool. They're still up there. So some of them have been long gone. But let's see what we can find in here. I'm actually impressed that this area has not been had a whole lot of graffiti to it just one little spot there but uh, as you can see it's pretty well wiped out but it's still got some shelves and the, see when we get the camera to show the uh, light sockets are still there so that's kind of cool light switches so the electrical is still here at one point you can see obviously is over time this tile or whatever was in here is just slowly coming apart but uh, yeah, overall, it's kind of a neat structure. So, served its purpose, got people fuel to get them to wherever it is that they needed to go on their travels. So we're gonna take and venture out here in a little bit in the snake bite grass. So it's just, uh, has a lot of character. You see those Again, a lot of those old insulators that you don't see anymore made out of ceramic and glass. This is probably one of the, I think this particular station had maybe two bathrooms. Uh, let's see if we can safely get in here. And as you can see, that's pretty well, I don't know if that's coming through on the video or not. Might be a little dark in there, because again, it's pretty bright out. So this is kind of fun. Here's the back side of the structure. So again, you kind of get an idea. This place is pretty interesting. And next door, is a residence. I'll try to get turned around here so you guys can see. So here's the residence. I don't know if the person that owned the gas station lived here or not, but what I was told by the police that stopped by is that now what they use this for is for SWAT. And at night they come in here and stage scenarios for police officers to find a way to peacefully and however they need to handle situations if they're in some kind of situation where they have to go into somebody's house. So as you can see all the glass and everything here has been blown out. Electrical panels still there. Look at this fan. Yeah, that's something isn't it? That's what Florida heat and humidity does to you. It just bends them right over. So we can actually go in here. I've been in here before. 
All right. Let's try to go inside and see what we can find. Looks like there's a little path here. All right, here we go. So here's those rooms that we just looked at again. Boy, I remember that pine siding from our house up in upstate New York. It was like all the rage back then. Here you can see obviously this is uh, falling down and might be able to get this real cheap. It'd be a little fixer upper. <laughs> so yeah, let's just kind of take a look around and uh, you can see that obviously some things have happened. Yeah, check out the Fan, that's something, isn't it? So you got to be careful in these types of places because you never know who or what you're going to meet. So we'll just kind of peek around the corner here. Again, this uh, looks like the wood's going to stay a while. It's insulation and everything. So. This might have been somebody's bedroom at one time. That probably was a closet with some shelves. So. Yeah, we might get a shot in here. I actually like the, I'll show you the shot that I was looking at, a composition. I was kind of waiting on the light a little bit. Just because of the paint and everything. Come back out here towards the road. So I've got a 300 millimeter on my 8x10, which is about a 50. So I was thinking maybe get the front of the structure would be kind of interesting. Maybe something inside the house. So we'll uh, we'll work on it and see what we get here. So, a little change of plan. It's, uh, if you guys have watched these videos, you know long enough that something's uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to me. So this location is right across the street from the city public works, and the road has been in disrepair for quite some time. And they've decided today to pull out the concrete saws and uh, leaf blowers and all kinds of stuff. So there is dust everywhere. Um, the gentleman who's in charge was very nice. He came over and let me know what they were going to be doing so none of my stuff would get covered in dust. So I hurry up and I got that one photo that I was showing you of the, um, of the windows with the peeling paint. So I got that. Basically metered um, the inside here is uh, two seconds at F64 and outside where it was in full shade but it was outside so a little bit more light was uh, eighth of a second so we're eighth quarter 
half, one second. So we're about four stops different. So that should be well within what, and I'm using FP4 plus. Uh, I exposed at 125 ISO. I did shoot two slides of this, two, two pieces of film just to make sure. Uh, if you notice, but I did not bring the Reese tripod with me today. I just didn't have it in me today to lug that thing uh, out here. So I'm actually working on another fix for that. So I'll be showing you that as soon as I get the parts in. Now this video is going to be a little bit different than the ones I've done in the past. Is basically what I'm going to do is we've, we've seen the location. So the next video will be uh, we're going to go back to the classroom and I'm actually going to develop this and bring you guys with me. So if you didn't see the developing tools video, you might want to watch that. I'll put a link to it. And that shows all the things that I use and how I, basically how I process film and deal with it without a dark room, which sounds kind of strange, but uh, basically I use a tent to do um, a lot of the things. So I'll be showing you that. Uh, then basically what we'll do in after we get the film developed is uh, we'll do a, a third video after this one, which will be uh, how I scan and print my, my photos from there. I do use a hybrid process because I don't have room right now for a dark room to make actual prints. So this is my next best thing that I can do for right now. So as always, I appreciate you guys uh, watching these videos. I know everybody's got a million other things that they can be doing. So I appreciate you taking the time to stop by and watch the video. Uh, if you like this, I hope you like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see you on the next one real soon. And hopefully we come back to this location after they get some of this work done and get that other house uh, or get the road finished. And then we don't have dust flying all over. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate it.